a while ago, I laid out all the different uh, ideal reactor types that we're going to see in this course. Uh, batch reactors, CSTRs, PFRs. And one thing you might be wondering about is, you know, are we just studying these different systems because they all look a little different um, and that forces us to think a little differently. That is one of the ways that I framed uh, why we look at them. But at the same time, I gave you some advantages and disadvantages of batch reactors. Um, and, you know, that could be answered by having a flow system like a CSTR. And as we've been looking at these examples so far and the, the material covered so far, I've shown you how you can take that generalized balance equation and apply it to all these different systems. And now we're, we're going back and we're sort of alternating between re problem solving uh, for, for each of the different systems as we work our way through batch and CSTRs, ultimately back to PFRs. Um, and we're also, we're also covering, uh, I'm, I'm sprinkling in some content about conceptual uh, challenges or things to keep in mind that might apply to any of these reactors. So we've done, a, we've done quite a few um, calculations so far where we try to figure out the volume of a CSTR. But I want to focus on a, a big conceptual principle here. Um, and uh, there's a couple, actually. Um, one is the difference between CSTRs and PFRs. And the other is thinking about reactors in series. You know, if you have a, a certain volume uh, or a container, do you really just want to use one uh, to do um, your reaction in. Yeah, maybe it's more efficient if you think about it just from like a material perspective. Or maybe do you want to break it down into um, separate chambers? Is there any um, advantage or disadvantage to doing that? Um, so we're going to be thinking primarily along a metric of reactor sizing here, um, where now we've, we, we're going to compare um, in this example that we're going to work through together, um, what volume we would get if we um, tried to achieve a particular um, conversion in one CSTR versus three CSTRs in series. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and work through this example. I've got, gone ahead and for the sake of time, um, written out the prompt, but you know, if you're taking notes at home, um, I'll try to talk through it slow enough to where you can write this down to. Uh, so just to, to mix things up, we've got um, some letters rearranged here. Uh, we have reactants B plus C um, in this reaction, um, going with the rate constant K to form A, our product. This is a liquid phase reaction, and it occurs um, with rate constant K of 9.92 meters cubed uh, per kilomole times kilosecond. Um, We've got initial concentrations of C and species B of 0 0.1 uh, kilomoles per meter cubed and 0 0.8, oh, sorry, 0 0.08 kilomole per, per meter cubed, um, respectively. So these reactants are um, stoichiometrically um, you know, uh, equivalent in terms of um, both having a coefficient of one. So we, we know our species B is um, our limiting reactant. Uh, we've got a volumetric chloride in. These are CSTRs, so this is a flow system. Um, and our volumetric chloride in is uh, 0 0.278 meters cubed per kilosecond. We want to know what volume is required to achieve this conversion of B, our limiting reactant, um, equal to um, you know 87.5% or 0 0.875. So that's what we're trying to figure out. We're gonna to try to compare this volume for the single CSTR case and the three CSTRs in series. So while we still have the prompt here, um, let's go ahead and just make a note of um, a couple of things. Uh, we've, got, um, we've got a liquid phase reaction. Uh, so we, we should have constant volume. And in fact, that's what we're trying to solve for. Um, what else can, can we note here? What are some other assumptions? Um, assumptions. Now, uh, I'm just doing this because in this whiteboard, it's easier for me to, to write it um, beside the prompt. But if you're solving this problem at home or on an exam, you want to you wanna write these things down um, below all of this um, and, and clearly point out, you know, where your assumptions are. You also want to draw the system. Uh, so let's go ahead. We'll just, for, for this sake, um, draw the one CSDR case reminding ourselves that there's something coming in. 
and leaving. Um, okay, let's continue on assumptions here. Uh, what else can we say? Um, what might we need to assume for forming a rate expression? Well, um, let's say that our reaction is elementary, elementary reaction. Okay, and that'll help uh, give us a, a form of rate. And in fact, we can say for species A in this case, I'll just pick our, our product, for example. Um, you know, normally we write RA, that might not be the best uh, species to pick in this case. You might wanna pick RB. Um, but we can say that the rate law for this, uh, based on elementary reactions, would be a positive K times CB times CC. Um, you know, or if we want to do it the, the usual way, it would be RB equals negative K times CB times CC. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and just state another assumption here. Um, it's a CSTR. So it's at steady state. All right. I think we're ready to proceed. Um, so let's go ahead and continue. So if we, if we try to write um, our different um, uh, sort of applying the design equations, um, first I wanna just um, introduce the concept uh, that I haven't gone over explicitly, but if you've been looking at chapter three, you've probably seen it, uh, of, of residence time, tau. Um, so there are a variety of um, these different design equations for CSTRs that are written um, in the form of residence time. And, and that's just your volume of your reactor divided by your volumetric flow rate. So let's think about the units here. Um, you know, if we're, if we're thinking about units, whoops, that, well, that says you, that should say units, okay. Um, we have a volume, and then we have, um, you know, a volume per time, and the volumes cancel. Uh, so we, we have um, units of time. And so this is why we, we call this a residence time or a space time. I'm just going to find this here, residence time, tau. Uh, so why um, might this be useful? Um, well, it's a, a useful time scale for CSDRs. Um, so we saw before with batch, there's this half-life, and that's a, a time scale that matters because when you've just got your reactants uh, sitting around in a pot of some kind, then, then you're interested in monitoring how much um, you know, time does it take, say, for half of your, your um, reactants to be consumed. Well, when you've got things flowing through a CSTR, um, it's good to think about how essentially the resonance time is kind of like an average, a time average um, uh, amount uh, that the, um, your molecules uh, spend in the reactor. Um, so think of it as approximately this idea that if you have um, a tank and you've got, uh, say, something flowing in, uh, you've got maybe it, you know, sp spins around and then it's out. And um, what you're getting um, by taking the volume of the reactor and um, dividing it by the volumetric flow rate is, is an approximation for the amount of time that, um, that a, a given molecule might might spend in your reactor. Um, so you you will see um, the design equation re written in terms of uh, of, of residence time. Um, and so, for example, um, design equation for CSDR um, rearranged and substituted. Uh, for for tau, uh, we can say uh, that it 
and and specifically, I guess if we're if we're referring to the volumetric flow rate just coming in, just to account for a situation where we might have variable volume, we'll call this tau naught. And so we'll say tau naught um, is equal to C A naught times the conversion of A over um, minus R A. And this is a uh, equation three dash twenty one. So, you know, last year I went over all of these different design equations in the beginning, but it didn't make as much sense. Um, so now I'm kind of introducing them gradually and trying to show you, um, you know, when they can be um, useful. And I think in this case, for example, if you don't know your, your reactor volume, um, and that's what you're trying to solve for, um, but you also don't, uh, you know, I think as you'll see that th this form might be um, an easier one to work with uh, for this problem. So let's go ahead and uh, write what our, our different species balances would look like um, with this concept of residence time. So we have um, species B is our limiting uh, reactant and so um, we can write uh, if we if we just um, rearrange things a little bit here, we can write that um, C B C B minus C B naught equals minus K times C B times C C times tau. Okay, so if you're looking at this. First of all, this is liquid phase. So we have um, our, our volumetric flow rates are, are constant throughout. Um, and so we just have a tau, we don't need to think about tau naught. And if you're looking at this rate expression, you know where this, this term on the right comes from. It's just our, our rate expression um, times our, our uh, residence time. So what happened here on the, on the left? Well, uh, this is um, using the definition of conversion. And, and so this is, is what you get when you do that. Um, so that's what it looks like um, for CB. Uh, and you can see that because of the, the rate expression, it's a function of, of both B and C. So uh, we'll, wanna, we'll wanna write a few of these. Um, we can do this for, for species C also. Um, Okay, times tau. And um, we have a third balance, which I'm not gonna be able to fit onto this page for species A. I'll go ahead and, and write that here. Uh, and A is our product. So remember this has a positive sign. All right, so you don't actually, um, you don't need to, to solve um, these equations uh, simultaneously. It won't, you're given actually the, the conversion target that you want. Um, that's uh, 0.875. And so you can actually um, just figure out what that must mean um, for what the concentration of B has to be um, coming out of your reaction, uh, out of your reactor. Uh, and you know how much um, CB naught you started with. So actually this is all you need to solve um, for CB. And so you can do that and quickly get um, so that CB equals 0 0.01 kilomoles per meter cubed. Okay. So now, though, if you want to um, uh, solve for species C, this is where um, having written out those different species balances can help. So to solve for, for the concentration of C leaving the reactor, uh, one one trick here is that you can um, subtract subtract. I'll go ahead and write subtract rather than sub. So maybe I don't want to have you confused for substitute, but you can subtract um, the first and second equations um, that we wrote before, and that gives you C C naught minus C B plus C B naught 
minus cc equals zero. Okay, and of course you know what cc naught is. Now you know what cb is, and you also knew what cb naught was. So you can very quickly get um, cc and then to 0 0.03 kilomole per meter cubed. Okay. So, um, you know, this actually, this may not have been necessarily the, the clearest example um, to start with residence time, but I needed to bring that subject up at some point. You know, uh, you're, you're probably going to use it, you're going to find in, in your homework or in other situations uh, that it, it's going to be um, more useful and more compact. Um, but in this case, um, so your volume uh, that you want, you're trying to solve for VR, and it's, it's in, VR is in the V tau term. And um, we can go ahead and, and solve for that um, just based on, let me go back a page. So if now we're back here and we, we have everything, we solved for CB and CC, so we can, we can quickly get a value for tau just using this first reaction expression. And so if we do that, now I'm gonna to go to a new page here. Uh, we get tau, oops, we get tau equals 23.52 kiloseconds. And uh, now if we want to calculate the reactor volume, we have um, the reactor volume equals the volumetric flow rate coming in times tau. And that gives us uh, 6.54 meters cubed for a single CSTR. Okay, um, we'll, we'll try to hang on to that, that value. Um, We'll come back to this page, maybe just to, to refer to it. But that's um, the volume for a single CSTR.